Okay, so guys, now that I'm injecting caffeine directly into my bloodstream, uh, which one's the post? Is it the affix system updates? It looks like it's this. Okay, um, so last week they made this big post uh, where they were like, here we're like redoing Mythic Plus and here's what we're doing. And there was, I'm not gonna go over every kind of reaction to this, but like we went over it in the potty. See, I had a YouTube video. Every content creator you've ever heard of has a YouTube video. You guys have heard takes if you care about this. But the general reaction was they were saying like, yeah, Affix is at a lower level, which is what we designed for, still provided variability, even though they weren't. And like the main point isn't to add difficulty. And it's like, okay, well, yeah, they do add difficulty. And while yes, they technically add variability, it's not like people at any key level like them, right? Like they still just don't feel like it's the solution. They also said something really important last week, which I'm interested to see if it is included here, which is they said that High Mythic Plus has only ever existed as just something that was extra on top of what we've designed for, you know, where the reward path ends, right? Like they've designed Mythic Plus as a curated experience to go up to what is now a plus 10 where you get your portals. And then after that, anything that's ever gone beyond that since Legion has just been an infinitely scaling system that in fact does infinitely scale, but they've never actually designed the game to be played at that level. Therefore, it is riddled with problems that they almost never uh, address because it's not what they designed for and it's such a small percentage of the player base. But something they mentioned last week is they are actually going to uh, potentially look at what it's like to make the game for those people and actually design a high Mythic Plus experience. So we're going to see what that looks like uh, potentially with this week as well. Uh, and there was also just, I think, another thing last week is there was a lot of friction between what affixes they chose to keep and which ones to bring away. Uh, they like chose to keep bolstering and bursting and sanguine and just a bunch of stuff that people hate um and got rid of some easy ones and they also came up with some new affixes that made like certain classes better on certain weeks and that was like really weird so let's see uh let's see where this goes but from the way that everyone's typing about it it seems like they've had a come to jesus moment with dungeons in general from this let's still see if there's some issues with it it also sounds like at least the vibe that Ian was giving in an interview the other day, that they basically completely changed their mind about that. Greetings, Dungeoneers. Is that what we are? This week's beta update includes major changes to the Mythic Keystone Affix system in the War Within based on player feedback. Our primary goal with these updates is to refine the Mythic Plus experience to better serve a diverse player base. Previously, we approached Mythic Keystones with a one-size-fits-all approach which proved challenging in striking the right balance and limited our design space. In this new build, you will see significant shifts in our design philosophy. Thank Jesus. We recognize the importance of weekly variety for those who progress through the system. However, for players pushing high keys, this variance has sometimes felt restrictive, definitely. Uh, push weeks, non-push weeks, keys being timeable on certain weeks and others, you guys know the deal. Also, just Fortified Tyran uh, has always been that too. We've also heard your feedback about wanting affixes with both positive and negative effects. So true kiss curse. That's interesting. We have been asking for something like that or just positive affixes for a long time. Or at least when people are asking for them, by the way, I, I want to know. I want Blizzard people to know that like at least for the community, a lot of the times we're asking to see this stuff, especially now that you're doing season fours. It's the perfect time to try this stuff. We are very well aware that like gamers are really good at identifying problems and really bad at identifying solutions. Like we don't know what the fuck we're doing when we're trying to solve shit, but we would like to at least see it. We're giving the idea of like, you know, it'd be interesting to see you have seasons where you can try stuff we would we would like to like but we've definitely identified it as a huge problem for a really long time so we're, we're glad we're solving it but they're also trying a very commonly suggested community thing so it'd be really interested to see how that goes um let's see as well as desire for thematic nods similar to past affixes oh interesting we've also heard your feedback about wanting affixes both positive as well as a desire for thematic nods i think what they're referring to here is seasonals because Everyone's like, we really, really like seasonals. But I don't think that had anything to do with the fact that they were thematic to the patch. People liked seasonals because the really good seasonals added a ton to gameplay. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe some people actually really, really liked that. You know, I'm just going to take my opinion away from that because I think like my brain is incapable of understanding theme being cool in a video game because all I care about is gameplay. So maybe a lot of people do care about this, but I just think that the... Um, I think the majority of why people like seasonals was actually not because this is my guess. 
I don't think the majority of why people liked seasonals when they were good was because they were thematic to the patch. I think it was because they were really, really, really fucking good. Uh, but the, you know, theme is certainly something that people like, I'm sure. But, uh, like, for example, if there was, like, like Thundering, for example, was really thematic to Razageth, but Thundering fucking sucks. Do you know what I mean? Like, they have to be great for them to be good at all, you know? Like, so, okay, the, uh, let's see. What is it? Infested was awesome. Because it's like the worm goes into mobs and they're infected. Yeah, just like Gahoon. What a great theme, right? Wow. I mean, just fucking fuck me up and down. Uh, this new update to the system will aims to meet those diverse expectations. We're maintaining the... Sorry, guys. It's 1030 in the morning or uh, it's 11 in the morning. I'm just going to say some stuff, okay? Let's just let's get that out of the way right now. I'm going to say some stuff that's going to shock you like I'm drinking lean in the next in the next couple hours because I'm not supposed to be awake at this time. There's something about my body that knows something isn't right, and it's going to try to cope with that by saying stuff. Okay, um, we're maintaining the core goals or last round of changes without the limitations of a one-size-fits-all approach. Okay, I'm really interested in how they're... I mean, I was about to say I'm really interested in how they're doing that, but it, I mean, it's pretty easy, right? You just start designing Mythic Plus differently at a certain key level. This flexibility allows us to craft a more tailored experience for each of the different playstyles. Let's dive into the new revamped affix system. Yeah, and okay, I want to mention something that I mentioned on the Potty C before too, because like a lot of people will say, I, I I heard this, they were like, why are they doing this? Like you say, don't design for the 1% or whatever in raid all the time. You say Blizzard often doesn't do that and you wouldn't be a fan of them doing that. But you saying that them making a high key experience is like a 1% thing. And at least using numbers, that's exactly right. In fact, somebody had like a random weird comment on the Potty C YouTube video and it was like, why doesn't Max understand that like there's way more people doing high mythic plus than 1% of mythic plusers? And like that's literally wrong. Like like in season three, for example, at least when referring to infinite scaling, the 0.1% title was somewhere around like a 27 and a half with score. Uh, but the 1% of keys were like 23s and uh, 23s and 24s um, at the beginning of that's the top 1% this at the end of season three, which would now be 13s and 14s, right? So pushing above when you're talking about high key scaling and like high key pushing it is literally the one percent of not even just the game of mythic plusers alone that are doing high keys at all so it is not a large group of people however i think it's a chicken before the egg thing i think it would actually be something people want to do more like doing dungeons with your friends and trying to go higher and higher is actually something that's really cool but in any rpg any mmo hey Reptar, please stop. Come here, buddy. Um, you have to you have to give a reward path to lead people in that direction. Like right now, the reason why there's so few people that do high keys is because there just isn't enough. Uh, there isn't any rewards. You get like KSM. You get like your tier piece. You get you get Keystone Hero, whatever, all that stuff. And then you get your portals, and then it stops, right? I still think something, even if they're making the experience better, I still think something they really need to do is they need to add rewards past that point. Something that isn't just a 0.1% title you get six months from now uh, to make people actually want to try it. Because clearly when they do, they'll like it. Like a lot of people like this, especially if they're going to remove a lot of the issues. So, okay, let's fucking, let's get in here. Uh... Affix update overview. We're reducing the total number of mechanical affixes on a keystone for players progressing through the system from two to one. Okay, so just as a as a baseline, at least with current affixes, this is a W because all affixes are at best neutral and at worst terrible. So reducing the total amount of them is great, although it sounds like they are introducing some new kinds of affixes down here. The following affixes are being retired in the war within. Sanguine. Rest in piss. I mean, let's just let's just fucking for thank god all right sanguine sanguine's just gone forever let's clap that up bolstering bolstering god damn what a fucking what a day we're what a day we're living in where bolstering is gone raging uh if you do if you're listening to this and you mainly do like lower keys like below a 10 or a 10 just for gear raging probably isn't the worst of your issues because People in those groups aren't fucking kicking cast anyway, but for people who've ever done high keys, raging is absolutely horrible. It's like super restrictive on your comp, and if any of those casts go off, you die. Uh, raging was a huge problem. Raging is gone. And for people who are at the top, you see bursting is gone. You're kind of like, hmm, I don't really know about bursting. I'm, you know, bursting's whatever. Bro, the word on the street is bursting 
absolutely fucking slaughters people under tens or around tens. Like, like it's like the most deadly affix uh, when you have like players that don't care as much about extending it and just less good healers. So like bursting being gone is also super good. Also, even bursting at a high level still like kind of requires MD in a way and like is just not fun. So all, all good. But also, isn't doesn't that mean that every affix that wasn't weren't these the only four affixes still remaining? So there's just, so not only are the following affixes being retired, literally all old affixes besides Fortified and Tyrannical are, are gone. They're dead. They're completely gone. And then we have the four that they applied to last week's Keystone. So rest and piss to those, just first off. Except for the couple that didn't really do a lot. We like those just because they didn't do a lot, which is part of the problem. Affixes that were part of the Mythic Keystone test will no longer apply to Keystones. Reckless, Focused, Attuned, and Thorned. Okay, so the test they did last week, which again, just was just a test, I guess. Uh, they're not doing that. That was also definitely... I thought there was something here, but okay to move on with it as well, because I don't think these necessarily accomplished it. All right. Um, and I didn't actually test that weekend, so I didn't see how it actually planned out. I'm more speaking about, like, the theory of it. Um... Okay, one of our bucket of affixes for players progressing through the system offers variety along with positive effects for executing these affixes that apply more evenly. Wow, I can't believe I'm fucking reading this. Like, dude, the whole, like, kiss curse slash positive affixes bit at Blizzard is so looked down upon, at least before this post, that, like, there'd be some times where you're doing interviews with designers. I like how, I like how Reptar and Lily are just absolutely brawling in the background, but, um... You would, you would hear people in an interview and they, and Ian would be like, hey, are you doing pot? I remember this from an interview recently. Like Ian would, Ian, I mean, I remember implementing this and Ian came in and asked me like, are you doing positive affixes? And I had to assure him the, assure him the answer was no. So they were clearly like so fundamentally opposed to this. So interesting to see what those look like. We're reintroducing thematic elements to affixes by invoking Zalatath and Mythic Keystones with her own set of affixes. Okay, so sounds like we're bringing back seasonal affixes which is, in my opinion, a W. Some people, at least the old version of seasonal affixes, where well, it looks like we're going to get a look at what these affixes are, so we'll look at those in a second. So bringing back, again, the thematic elements are good. Uh, everyone knows how people feel about seasonals, right? Like, seasonals were... Everyone wanted seasonals back when they were good, but thought seasonals were bad when they were bad, and there was, like, never... There was very rarely, like a seasonal affix that was in the middle but it doesn't even seem like now they're bringing back se like seasonal affixes they're bringing back like an entire affix set that are all thematic which i think could also we'll see like what their general ideas are here with them but i could also see that still being kind of the same as before right like imagine let's just say this right let's just say these four zalatath seasonals are fucking insane right like they're just the best possible affixes they could make and then whatever next season or expansion, like expansionals or whatever, let's just say the ones they make there are just simply not quite as good. They're not awful, but they're not quite as good as this. People just be like, make Ascendant permanent, make Frenzied permanent. You know, it's maybe a problem for the future, uh, but just something to think about where that could be weird. Uh, we're aiming to eliminate... Because, again, Zalatath isn't the boss in the first raid. Zalatath is, like, the the antagonist for this expansion. I think she's that shadow girl. Uh, so it doesn't look like they're going to be changing these every season. So We're utilizing passive affixes to signpost expected increase in player mastery and commensurate rewards as players progress through the Mythic Keystone. Man, I bet this person sounded felt like they sounded so smart when they wrote signpost and commensurate in the same sentence. You know what I mean? Let's just, let's just say stuff. All good. And then we're aiming to eliminate push weeks by providing a consistent challenge that focuses solely on the dungeon for players seeking to advance deeper into the Mythic Keystone system for scores and titles. So that's one right off the bat that I'm definitely interested in seeing how they accomplish that. And also, there's like 1% of me that wonders if like push weeks in hindsight were kind of a good thing for some people. Like, not when, in some seasons where it was literally like there was one week every six weeks. And it's not for most people. Like, most people, it's just bad. But, like, at least there's, like, weeks where you went hard, you know? Like, for example, if you're, like, the top, 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 top team, and you have, like, someone with a job, maybe you don't go all out every single week. You know there's this one week, and you, like, take off work, and you actually just play all day every day during that week and get all your score. And there's, like, some level of doing that. But I guess with this, you could do the same thing. It would just be, like, you would wait until you have all your gear. And again, I don't think that's a lot of people anyway, so it probably doesn't really matter. Um, this just front loads it. Well, still, you're kind of... If you were ever going to do that as that 
made up person in this exercise, you would still just wait until you had the most gear. Cause like, why would you go all day every day just to get rank one IO and all those keys are gonna be gone because now you have five more eye level, you know? Um, okay, I mean, should what they do with uh, homework keys too. Oh, Lily, let's just, let's just, let's just complain because I'm not betting you. Okay, new affixes. Starting in a keystone level two, Zalatath herself will manifest the dungeons introducing a rotation of affixes under the banner of this. These affixes not only seek to empower the dungeon's denizens, but also grant players the opportunity to harness their effects. <laughs> okay, so these affixes are going to try to buff mobs, but give you the opportunity to also get buffed or steal it from them. I guess for our first test this week, we will have two affixes available. One is an event that players must deal with periodically, while the other affix is a passive effect on creatures throughout the dungeon. <laughs> okay. So we're going to try both things. We're going to try the feel of interacting with things. So like something like this is kind of thundering, right? Like thundering is something, uh, obviously, hopefully none of you guys hear a word and instantly get triggered and can't think of the good parts about it. But like, so when they're referring to that, like thundering is something you actively had to do to deal with it, right? Like, so that's the idea. And then there have been other affixes that are like more passive, uh, like kind of like shrouded, except for the fact that that ad existed. Some affixes can be good or bad with both, but it's just like different gameplay design. And thundering. And now I'm mad. And look what you said. <laughs> um, okay, so here's the first one. While in combat, Zalatath rains down orbs of cosmic energy that attempt to empower nearby enemies, increasing their haste and movement speed. If players disrupt these orbs, they claim this effect for themselves. So initial thoughts here. Interesting. I could see the more active version of this being a little annoying. What I'll explain by that is... Uh, like, okay, imagine you constantly have to run around to do this kind of stuff. And then imagine you don't like haste. I don't know. There are classes in this game that are awesome and hate haste. And there are classes in this game that scale crazy with haste. So this would also, like, be potentially, like, giga meta defining, too. And also, you have to, like, run around constantly. So it would, it would also restrict yourself to classes with really good movement. Um, but also, I haven't seen, apparently, they do something later with, uh, oh, here we go. Yep, never mind. Okay, we just doesn't even matter for high keys, so irrelevant. Uh, but well, irrelevant for high key pushers. But this is still something that the everyman will do in all of their keys every week to get gear right. And then let's look at the passive one. Non-boss enemies become frenzied at thirty percent health remaining, increasing their haste by forty percent, but increasing their damage taken by twenty. Okay, that again, not for high keys. So usually haste. Well, haste also increases damage too, right? So like their melees, not even just their casts. So, so okay, I ha there's one main issue I have with this and it, and it kind of ties back to Faded. Or not Faded, what the fuck am I talking? Why did I say Faded? Did I read that somewhere here? No, I didn't. What the fuck is wrong with me? That, that ties it back to uh, Raging. Um, raging, again, didn't really seem that bad on like a five or a six. Because if you were in a five or a six, there's a there's a high chance that those casts were just young going off anyway, <laughs> right? So it like didn't matter that much. But in high keys, raging was really annoying because if any of those casts went off, you would die. So it sounds like these affixes are only going to apply to players who are doing keys for gear, right? Uh, and I could see them specifically getting like. Okay, so Raging didn't really matter because you weren't kicking them, but imagine now, instead of them being unable to be kicked, which is what Raging did, they just cast 40% faster. So wouldn't you just get fucking slaughtered <laughs> in the same case, right? So, like, uh, I mean, 40% haste. First of all, mobs taking more damage when they're low health is interesting because, especially in lower keys... Actually, at lower keys, I guess your cooldowns are still up. I'm trying to think, like, in a high key, this would suck because, like, who has CDs up when the mobs are dead? You know, like, your CDs are, like, over by then and they're regening for the next pack, kind of. Um, so that would just feel bad. Oh, except for classes that have cooldowns all the time, I guess. Execute phase? Yeah, but, like, there's not a lot of classes that have, like, execute AoE, you know? It would actually make... I mean, yeah, like, mini bosses, it would make execute a lot better, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and just first impression. We can test it. But this 40% number is very, very big. That's just, just my first thought. It's just, uh, this is a big fucking number. Also, like, it, at those key levels, tanks already have kind of a lot going on in keys. They need to, like, know where to go. If they die, the group wipes. That's not really true for anyone else. Maybe healers on bosses without battle reses. <laughs> but, bro, like, most pug tanks, the mob's just randomly getting a 40% damage amp, basically. That's gonna, that's gonna fucking kill, kill tanks. What is it, Max? This isn't, uh... 
this isn't on higher keys. Yeah, yeah we've discussed that. In higher keys, I wouldn't be as worried about it because tanks and higher keys kind of know what's up. In fact, a lot of people want to do uh, kite meta. Yeah, so kite meta is terrible. Like if this were, if this involves tanks kiting at low HP, they need to immediately think of something else because that's what Necrotic did. That's the main reason Necrotic was bad. You're forced to AFK. I'll, I'll actually just anytime the meta is tanks run away from mobs they have threat on instead of tanking them straight up. Whatever is causing that is dog shit. We'll see how that goes. So let's see how this goes here. Starting at Keystone level seven, a new affix, Challenger's Peril, directly affects the dungeon timer. This affix emphasizes precise play and strategic execution, placing greater risk on players' decisions. So Challenger's Peril is dying will now subtract 15 seconds from the time remaining rather than five seconds. Okay, my initial thought with this is still trying to get myself uh, understanding high keys. So let me see, does this get, do they get rid of this at some point? Let's, let's keep reading. Starting at Keystone level 12, a new affix replaces Zalatath's bargain affixes. At this level, Zalatath revokes her bargains, empowering dungeon creatures with a 20% increase in health and damage. And that's, this is the thing. Zalatrath betrays players, revoking her bargains and increasing the health. So you still have Challenger's Peril. There's one issue in high keys right now. The comp that you make and the decisions that you make in a dungeon largely are in the effort of not dying. Only one issue. One of the few. One of the many, I guess. Whatever. High key problem right now. When you're playing keys, you feel like you're playing the key to not die rather than playing the key to time the key. Then there's a few reasons for that. The main one being the way that Mythic Plus Dungeons scale is just wrong. Like, clearly the mob health should scale more than the damage that they do to you. Uh, so it more naturally lines up in something where you're trying to do both at the same time, rather than really just focusing on not dying. It's why AUG is good. It's why you play super safe. All things that are not great, right? This seems like that would make that even worse, right? Like, dying being three times worse means that your comp is just going to be the most defensive thing ever, right? Like, you can't fucking die. That's so much time. <laughs> so, like, that that just, that to me, and, like, defensives are already such a huge problem in this game. I'm not going to repeat myself a lot. You guys know the deal, how it affects healing. But especially in this expansion, you have seen classes with strong defensives more than other expansions be, like, the classes that you need to have in in high keys you need mages with 10 million defensives you know you played like rogue stacking or verse stacking rogues at one point you know like warlocks were immortal bro three times the death timer is crazy bro that is that is a big number and and with no with no like benefit right so I, i'm just really interested in seeing how that plays out they'll give some of their thought process later so maybe we'll look at that but um, even more of a reason for them to take an extremely strong look at the defenses in this game. Okay, Fortified and Tyrant. Fortified and Tyrannical now serve as milestone affixes that alternate between key levels 4 and 10 on weekly rotation. We feel this provides us those clearer points in the system where increases in difficulty and rewards occur. This also affords more distinction between the key levels for players progressing through the system and a consistent week-to-week -week experience for players progressing deeper into the Mythic Keystone system. A lot of systems. When I hear system, I get mad. So at level 2, you get Zalatas Bargain. At level 4, you get Fortified or Tyran. At level 10, you get whichever one of Fortified or Tyran you didn't previously have, meaning that any key where you're going to get the portal will have both Fortified and Tyrannical and the ones where you cap out your vault. I guess you could do 19s and not have the second one, which is actually nice, right? Like, can't you do can't you do nines in the in the expansion and get old nineteens, new nines? You could do nines and not have both to farm your crests, dude. Holy shit, are you gonna do that, <laughs> dude? No one's ever gonna do tens for gear. By the way, <laughs> that sounds like such a loss. Um, just gaining another thing of fortified or tyran. Okay. Unless they change crest. True, but they already did. So maybe you're right. But I mean, they also changed Mythic Plus last week and then they completely changed it again. So um, tens are for the port. Yeah, which kind of makes sense. You should work harder for the port. Um, okay. And then at 12, you no longer get Zalatas Bargain and instead you get Zalatas Guile. And at seven, you get the deaths are 15 seconds off your timer bit. I hope something else they mentioned in this article is I hope they stop reducing the rewards you get for depleting a key so like 
Currently, if you time a key, you get extra crests, and if you deplete a key, you are punished by not only depleting your actual keystone, but you also get less crests and less of other rewards, like gear. I feel like they should be encouraging you to be trying levels that you may not time, rather than re overly punishing you for doing that and forcing you to just spam lower easy keys, which is monotonous and boring. Just a thought, but something they could look at. Okay, keystone system summary. Uh, here are some examples of what keystones look like under this new model. Number two, Zalateth affixes appear in a weekly rotation. Fortified or Tyrannical is active, alternating on a weekly rotation. Challengers is on all, all keystones. Ten is Tyrannical or Fortified is active, alternating on a weekly rotation. But again, if you are doing a ten or above, you do have both, right? So anything above a ten will always have both. Now that's another thing that's kind of interesting too, is like, it will remove variants. There will not be push weeks. Now there isn't... I'm assuming on high keys, there isn't going to be a tyrannical and fortified score anymore. It's just going to be one score, which is kind of interesting. Maybe it'll alternate based on... Well, there would be no alternating, right? 12s have both. Refresh. Eh, I'll refresh later. Um, damn, so literally every week is going to be the same. I'm, I'm interested with that. I actually, I've heard a few Mythic Plus players specifically say they like the, like, there's score for each week so like having it always be the same score no matter what i think is something that's interesting but i'm sure there's some people to be a fan of it we'll hear more from them later we're evaluating how dungeon scores are granted under this new model we believe that these changes along with our heroic and mythic dungeon changes provide players with a with ways to engage with dungeons in a setting they prefer this is a fresh look at mythic plus and we look forward to your feedback and continuing discussions on these affixes and overall system changes we'll see you in dungeons then i'll refresh it I've updated this in the original post. Keystone levels 2 through 11 have the following affixes. Oh, okay, yeah. They just made this less confusing. We already understood this, though, right? So, plus 10 Tyrannical and Fortified are active. Man, okay, so you guys know how I feel about Tyrannical and Fortified, right? Fortified gives you the ideal trash length and the ideal boss length, and Tyrannical gives you way too long bosses and way too short of trash. With the new thing with you, you're going to have both of them, you won't have the way too short of trash anymore, but... I am still concerned that bosses will be like seven minutes long. Any ads, any bosses with phases or which you can just design bosses without health based or timer based phases, I guess, or ads that spawn that you have to swap to. Now you're just going to have like longer bosses. Blizzard will need to tune. It's not really a tuning thing. Like it's an infinite scaling problem with tyrannical existing at some point within a reasonable key level, you will be doing bosses for four to five minutes, even without phases it's just how tyran works and i've just i've just never i'm uh, me personally i've just never done a boss on tyrannical longer than three minutes and felt like that was a good thing and i'm still enjoying doing this boss that's now rotated through its entire mechanic set five times you know like i've i've we've done it we get it you know i just feel like maybe something to like just something to look at maybe is just like make bosses do more damage to you maybe but like don't actually increase their health at a certain level because it really really sucks it really fucking sucks in high keys how long you fight bosses it's just it's simply not fun only at really really high levels though okay so overall i think this is a w for a few reasons sanguine bolstering raging and bursting are gone that is a fucking colossal w that is a w that would topple mountains if it were to just roll over itself over and over again it would just destroy everything in its path just a massive w right fucking rest in piss specifically these two for me these i don't think quite hit so also a similarly sized but a little smaller w i think the expansionals which i mean again it sounds like we're gonna have rotating affixes under 10s or under 12s right they're just trying two of them out this week i don't even know if these are going to be the versions we get later i think i'm really glad they're trying these because i think they're going to change frenzied because this sounds like a huge fucking number again it's not happening on high keys but i think this will slaughter lower key tanks just straight up 40 percent massive number um and, and it, it even not tanks, like, even if there's important casts that need to be kicked, like, you're just, people at that key level are just gonna miss those kicks. <laughs> they already don't do them, now they're harder to get, you know? Um, and then Ascendant could be fun. We really just need to test this shit. Hello? Hello? Hey, why are you so loud? Holy shit, let me turn you down a little bit. You're just so, you're so broad and manly that it, sh it shook me. I just had to turn you uh, down a little bit so I could... Yeah, I have that effect on other men. Yeah, you do. Um, so you just got done pushing, right? First of all, what's your, mm -hmm. uh, ha has this season been a good push for you in general? 
Uh, well, I mean, it's the rest of Druid season, so we appreciate those. Okay. Um, and wait, what's your score? Are you fucking huge right now? Are you are you uh, fucking slaughtering people or what? So okay, so we're thirty eight, thirty three, which is like decent, but it's in the context of this was a like the first real tyrannical push week of the season, and a lot of the other teams were fucked off to TGP. So I'm not gonna like flag. I do. There was nothing that pissed me off more than doing WoW esports and dudes that didn't do WoW esports sneaking in on a push week while everyone else was gone, and then being like, oh now, my, top now that's five you, in the bro. Fucking world now, now that's you. Now, now, now that's you. So damn. So I gotta add the big old asterisk next to it that like, yeah, the score the score is decent at the moment, but also it's like, well, can I correct it's like you? World you War Two Major League Baseball. What do you say your score was? 38, 33. I want to correct you. You're actually, uh, you're, you're underselling yourself, big guy. You are 38, 34, actually, uh, according oh, holy to this. Shit. Yeah, according to this website. So I, uh, then let me change my answer. I'm, f I am. You're a fucking huge. Huge. Wow. You're fucking Woo! insane, dude. Holy fuck, that is crazy. All right, did you have a chance to read the uh, the affix changes today? A little bit, yeah. Um, what's your take, man? What is the? Uh, are you excited? Like this is the first time High Mythic Plus has its own dedicated thing, but also there's like. There's, I don't know, like you're going to have Tyran all the time now. So you're going to have long bosses permanent. Yeah, but it's not like that's the thing is like, it's not tyrannical. Like the, the tyrannical was mm -hmm. that bosses were longer than they normally were. Like tyrannical is only bad to the extent that Fortified exists. Correct. And then you compare it to Fortified and you're like, wow, this fucking sucks. Well, if it's just tyrannical all the time, then... Kind of though, right? Because like tyrannical... Okay, yes, that's true as far as, like, one feeling better than the other and there being two weeks, but also Tyrannical existing at all, which it does now and it used to be on a bio or every other week, now you're still going to have those seven-minute bosses. Like, that will still exist purely because Tyrannical exists all the time. But that's that can be, like, a boss design thing, though, too. Yeah, I mean, I, maybe they uh, maybe they change scaling on bosses to account for it um, or something. I, I'm not terribly concerned about getting, like, seven-minute bosses. I don't think that'll be a thing. I, f I feel like... If they if they listened enough to the community to make these changes, then they have to know that nobody wants to do seven minute dungeon bosses. Um, and if that does become a thing, I think they'll take steps to correct it. Okay, eventually. What, what is so kind of on that same note? Are you going to miss that there are two weeks with two different scores, or are you looking forward to there being one score that is always no? I don't. Attainable? I don't like the different score thing. That was always so weird and like shoehorned yeah. like that. It was such a like a ham-fisted way to make people play Tyrannical because Blizzard implemented their in-game score for a while before they did that, and everyone just played Fortified Weeks, and that's where you got your score, and then you didn't give a shit about Tyrannical Week because you were never going to get score from it because you were never going to do better than your fort. And so people just played on Fort Weeks and then disappeared during Tyrannical Weeks or played alts or whatever, and then I guess Blizzard got butthurt about that and they're like well actually you're gonna get 30 percent of your score from the other ethics and then everyone was like oh jesus so now you don't have to worry about that anymore and that's uh i mean it all ties back into the idea of of every week now being the same which sounds bad like that sounds bad when you say it i think to most people it's like oh every week's the same now but well, like, this is what you actually, wanted right good. didn't yeah, we this is good. I, I gave you the like what what is what does yes. mythic plus look like to you what is this version and you said i would love to just see them try not having affixes and at least at least at the level of keys you and a lot of people like you will be doing there basically isn't right yes i i am trying not to get too excited by the changes from reading about them because my reasonable expectation is there will be something that I'm not thinking of that I'll realize later that I'm like, oh, actually, it sounded really sick. But then there's this kind of like related problem that, that comes up. So I, I want to sort of temper my excitement for it. But truthfully, I think this is about as close to like getting exactly what I wanted mm. as I was as was ever likely to happen. OK, what about so there was one major change. So they 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 have it now where it's like always the same week gonna be consistent there is no push week every week is push week but they did they did change one thing so now deaths are always going to be a 15 second loss instead of five what's your what's your thought i i would have really appreciated like a note on that one like where their head was at on the death timer like why that was necessary because again i have always felt like the death timer was similar to affixes and depletion just a thing you don't need in the key like you are already punished for dying like you, when you die, <laughs> you have to figure out a way to res the person, which either takes time, either either you have to use a battle res charge, or you have to wait till combat's done and then spend time resing, or they have to release and run back. Deaths are not free, um, even independent of the impact on the timer. 
And if you can figure out a cool way to die and save time in the key by doing so, I think that should be encouraged. Yeah, like, exactly. You know, it's it's like use you're, all the tools yeah. available to you. And so adding a 15 second, like I already thought five. I mean, death skips are dead, right? Salt death skips have to be dead. Like or I'm like uh, it depends. Okay. I mean, if you if one person can die and accomplish a thing, like if if one person can run through and unlock a checkpoint and the rest of the group can really? catch up to them and they a die minute? for it, maybe it's worth it. A minute, but, yeah. But yeah, if you're having multiple people die for a, it, better be the best goddamn skip that you've ever seen in your life. Yeah. Which I mean, here's one thought I had about it is like I know currently an issue with high keys is. You feel like you're, and maybe this isn't true at the levels you're at now. Maybe those things have added up. But like in the few levels leading up to the level you're at now, the key levels, it seems like you are progressing don't die far before you are progressing. Let's see if we can time this. And I feel like that leads itself into certain comps. I mean, it's definitely a reason why AUG is good. Uh, but even if you look past AUG, let's say AUG didn't exist, it would still not only want classes that do insane damage, but also classes that specifically have just a really unique and strong and a high quantity of defenses in their defensive toolkit. And this almost, unless they also tune Mythic Plus Dungeons to scale that way, I feel like this also triples down on that, right? Like you're always going to be playing Don't Die, maybe. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you can see uh, this, this expansion had a really good um, example of that with Warlock where Warlock showed up ton in MDI, this expansion, mm -hmm. in both season one and uh, less so in season one, but still made some appearances in season one. And then this um, last MDI, Warlock was in the meta comp. And people played the shit out of Warlock in the MDI on lower keys because Warlock's survivability was not as big of a deal there. Um, and AUG wasn't as big of a deal for survival um, at that key level. And then when you came back to live, Warlock just disappeared. Like nobody was playing it, and uh, that is essentially a um, like the story of survivability in Mythic Plus right now, which is when all you care about is damage. You were bringing Warlock a bunch; it, it was really good at blowing stuff up. But as soon as you needed to figure out ways for your group to live, you start going into higher keys. Then Warlock's inability to help keep your teammates alive and Og's ability to help keep your teammates alive suddenly became the swing factor. And even though Og was not perhaps going as fast as Warlock would allow you to go. You just made the wholesale swap over to Aug, um, yeah, because Warlock would just limit your ability to time keys. Okay. Um. So I know you've already you've said like we want a no affix world, and you got that. But during the time today when you acknowledged that that is what you were getting, have you taken any time to reflect on the fact that you will never see Sanguine bolstering, raging, or bursting ever again? I mean, it's like I, I'm trying. You know, I, I want to be, I, and, and I've had this sort of conversation with myself before of like do you are you sure you don't want affixes like are you okay. really really internal sure? internal dialogue you're just you're like just going before back and forth. yeah before you get up on that soapbox and start demanding no affixes are you real sure you're not gonna look like an asshole if they're like okay affixes are gone and then two weeks later you're like you know i kind of miss bolstering well what's the okay that's not true but, but, but what's the fear what's the fear is it why would you miss bolstering it would well, that's just it. That's just it. it. I don't necessarily have a reasonable expectation I'm going to miss affixes, but I was always a little bit worried that, that, you know, there's always that fear in the back of my mind that after stumping so hard for getting rid of affixes that they would do it. And then I'd a month afterwards go, ah, you know, this isn't actually what I thought it would be like. And I can't really go back on that now because I've just spent the last several years being like affixes suck ass and this would be so much better if they got rid of them and then they get rid of them and now i'm like eh, okay man maybe they weren't that bad but truthfully you know i've i've had opportunities to do keys with no affixes on beta like that's basically what every beta cycle was once they introduced the ability to make your own keys. yeah you would just is, choose not to put them on there yeah you would go in and you'd put like fortified 20 back on the old scaling you'd go in you'd set fort you set scaling uh set fort you set 20 and then you just go in and slam the keys and like i'm pretty sure i did that shit for months dude okay that that was kind of my take when i read this was like that was the only thing you put on there fort and it was just so you achieved the uh desirable amount of time you fight trash by giving them health you actually wanted to fight trash longer that's kind of why i was 
I'm interested in how this turns out, and just that I think the fact that it like rotates Fort and Tyran, and then your high keys will always have both is fine. I just wonder what the world looks like if they just don't add the boss HP thing, because I just so strongly feel like fighting Mythic Plus dungeon bosses longer than three minutes is just, it's just objectively boring. Like, you're just seeing the same thing again. So, or, or maybe just removing the health portion from Tyrannical, just from a pure fun perspective. Like, I think when you're able to pick affixes, like you're mentioning in PTR, like we're going to be able to do, well, not today, I guess we're testing this today, but like this is a different setup, but they, you would choose to put on Fort. It's the only affix you ever choose to put on. You never, ever, ever choose to put on Tyrannical for that exact reason. I just wonder if there's something to that, like some other cook they could do with this is actually just either reducing boss HP in general, but that affects the lower scaling keys, but like specifically in high keys, just not having bosses take forever somehow. Well, there are some bosses that scale up in a fun way. Um... Like, for instance, third boss of Halls um, just has a, a pulsing damage aura. And as a healer, that is a fun fight because it is the closest you'll get to just unlocking your full HPS potential. And so as the key goes up, um, you, you have to start getting better and better about maximizing both your healing per second and your healing per mana because it, it will become, you know, uh, on Tyrannical, the fight will last long enough that on a high enough key level, you you will be fighting against your mana bar. And it's very rare in Mythic Plus to have an encounter where mana is a constraint in an interesting way. Yeah. Um, and so I, I appreciate that boss, but not every boss can be like that. And uh, unfortunately, in the case of most bosses, as they scale up, you just hit the one-shot wall. And instead of having a constant pulsing damage aura that gets more and more oppressive and you have to figure out ways to, to outheal it, you just have the bosses that they hit the binary point where they do more damage now with their one mechanic, then you have health and you fall over. Um, and so it is difficult to scale boss damage in a way that doesn't feel unfair. Um, and I think everyone can admit that dungeon bosses are not designed to be mechanically super complex. They're certainly not the equivalent of raid bosses. Um, I don't think Nor there's very many be. dungeon nor should they be. Yeah. And I don't think there are very many dungeon bosses that people would describe as, like, really fun. Well, I will... Uh, you know what? It's interesting. I think there have been bosses, the closer they got to being, like, a little mini raid fight have been well-liked. There's some examples, like like the last boss of Gambit, right? Like, that... At least it seems people liked the complexity and the difficulty of that, and they felt like it, it was... At least... Am I, am I off base there? Like, there have um, been... There yeah. have been some good ones. Um, there have been... Yeah. As, like, I think a lot of times the... The um, mega dungeons that they've released, they have tried to make more interesting boss fights uh, that were, that are more complex mechanically. But that for every one of those, you have you know five. You have the ones that you know, like tier, Rawls right? from Waycrest, where it's literally just a big fat pig, and you beat on him and dodge frontals, and it takes five fucking minutes. And it's like, yeah. man, who? Nobody wants to do this Wait, fight does that, for five minutes. Does that Nobody boss wants to watch have, this fight. Does that boss have more HP than like normal bosses? Isn't that also a thing? Like I feel like maybe. He just, he yeah, does I take think a maybe while. he had more. Because like you yeah, like cleave a bunch of mobs on top of. Him. Maybe it's because you're AOEing a bit when you pull it with a bunch of. I don't know, but it does seem like it takes like forever. But yeah, those are the bosses where they're simple, and like I appreciate a simple boss, but if it's simple and I have to sit there doing it for five minutes, like. God damn, you just can we just fast forward through this? And so there, there either needs to be, they either need to consistently design more interesting bosses, which I don't expect them to. I mean, there's a lot of dungeons that um, that they release each expansion. You know, there's, uh, if they do like eight dungeons per expansion and there's on average four bosses, then you got to come up with 30 some interesting bosses. Um, and we've now committed to using old dungeons so they can't go back and make all of the old bosses different. You, you're not going to rework every old boss to make those interesting. So yeah, I mean, I, I think the, the the difficulty with Tyrannical is how do you make these bosses that are not designed to be interesting for five minutes at a time? Um, do we want to commit to making them five minute bosses? Uh, do we want to avoid that? And if so, how do we balance around that? Because it is, it would be kind of weird, you know, if you if you're throwing out alternatives, it would be a little weird to have a boss that's like static health and static difficulty 
and as the key gets more and more difficult, the boss stays. Yeah, it's just like this. Like, it's like a rest period almost. It's like right. oh, let's kill this easy ass boss. It's tuned way lower. I mean, I kind of like the the thing you were talking about with like like think about raid bosses, right? Like think about if raid bosses didn't have a like enrage where it's kind of like there is a world where you could just keep doing the boss over and over again. I mean, people talk about how how there's like a certain length of bosses. Usually, it's over ten minutes of raid bosses, where it's like, okay, this is just we've just been doing this fight too long. It's the same feeling of doing a dungeon boss too long, where it's like, okay, I get it. You know, we've been in here for ten minutes, but like, there's an enrage timer. Like, I, I think the idea of like an enrage timer on dungeon bosses is interesting. You curate an experience of what a dungeon boss should look like, and that could also be a way to time keys. Like, you're talking about needing to time keys for damage. Well, like, would it even be a fun Mythic Plus experience if like it's not even you see at the end of the dungeon? if you can make the time it's like whether you actually can even beat the enrage of this boss of like a dungeon boss i think that could but like the enrage isn't a hard enrage it's like a soft pulsing thing so you could also progress through that i think there's a world where that doesn't sound awful but i just don't know how it would work with infinite scaling yeah i i think from a healing perspective you would have to start from scratch with how you design bosses um in order to make scaling bosses interesting because every boss would have to have a a rot damage component where as it scales up, it just becomes increasingly more difficult to heal through, but doable. At no point do you just get one shot. Um, and then the game becomes how, you know, how well can I manage my, my mana pool to uh, do this boss for five, six minutes or whatever, and keep up with the HPS requirement. And that's a fun, that's a fun game for a healer. Um, I think those are, that's, if you ever ask healers like what their favorite kind of raid bosses are, it's it's basically that, you yeah. know. So some fight where there's just constant damage and you're you're never overhealing, you're always dumping healing into something. Um, yeah. But it, it would be, every boss would start to kind of look the same if you did yeah. that. Um. So this isn't something that you're probably super interested in. I guess it would affect you for crest farming. But like another thing that you you've always been like, oh, let's see what no affixes look like. But a lot of other people have been a let's let's do kiss curse affixes. And I yep. feel like they're kind of doing that now. Um. I guess what is your what is your impression of this? Not maybe the design, maybe maybe more the concept of trying it and having it not apply to high keys, but also maybe also the specific aff affixes they mentioned. Yeah, I mean, I, I like that they're trying it. And really, that's all that I've, I think, realistically ever asked for from Blizzard is just try some different shit. Like Mythic Pluses look fundamentally the same since its inception. Whether we've, we've painted it some different colors, but the the guts of it have been the same since the start. And we've really never tried anything too drastic um, in changing it up. And so I, I just wanted to see different stuff. Um, it's crazy. They experiment. Didn't, it's crazy. They didn't do any of this in season four, by the way. Yeah. It's insane. And, and yeah, like it is, I would love to have been a fly on the wall. This is by the way, one of the most shocking developments. Um, I think in my history of being a content creator, just how, much blizzard kind of slow rolled this coming out of this expansion where throughout the beta cycle you know they were asked about mythic plus and it was like yeah we're not really we're not intending on much, doing yeah. anything don't expect anything huge and then you know ian and morgan do the the interview where they're like okay well we're actually you know we're thinking about some stuff it's on our radar which is you know this isn't a shot at ian but he's had plenty of interviews like that where he said you know there's an issue we recognize it we know that it's an, a problem and we're working on it but the fruits of that aren't seen for like a year or something um and just because it's a thing that blizzard has flagged as being an issue doesn't mean we're in any uh we're on any sort of near timeline to getting a, a resolution for that well we felt like we, so were on the that, we felt like we were on the opposite timeline yeah right? It was, I, it was, literally just yeah. today somebody asked like so you know uh blizzard was talking about big changes for mythic plus what are you what are your expectations like i have none i mean like yeah, yeah it's a nice interview i like hearing it but this is something i wouldn't expect to see until maybe like at best like the point one patch realistically more like the point two patch um these kind of changes you know something this large if they were really going to rework affixes there's no shot we see this um until well we're like halfway through the expansion what it feels like is it feels like they released that interview last week 
And it seems like they listened to most or all of everyone in the community's takes about it. And then this is in direct response to all of the general takes you've seen. Like, it, it feels like a Blizzard listened to us moment, right? This seems now, like it's a direct uh, result of that. There's two things, like, there's two different outcomes or, or like, um, sort of realities that could have led to this. One is, is that Blizzard has been working on this a long time, or relatively long time, working on these affixes. And just by coincidence, as the fervor in the community has picked up with, like, we don't want affixes, we want kiss curse, blah, 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 that the timing of this has just been coincidental that they've had this I, I don't think go. so. I, and I have an anecdote of why. So they, they had a interview that was talking about something completely different. It was like a loot or reward-based interview. It had something to do with, like, crests. And I remember a dev having an aside during one of his answers and being like, I remember Ian even talking to me about this and he was like, you're not making positive affixes or kiss curse affixes, are you? And then he was like, no, it's not. It's something totally different. It's like he even mentioned since like the beta has started uh, or maybe it was alpha. Uh, they were like, it was still kind of a joke at the office that like, of course, you're not going to do some kind of kiss curse or positive affixes. So clearly the tune on that has completely changed since the start of alpha. So it if that's true, then it's the other reality, which is that Blizzard was able to do all this shit in the space of like two weeks. Yeah, that's what I think. I because, And now, yeah, that's if I, I know that Blizzard can do this in two weeks, they fucked up because now I know what they can do in two. I know the level of changes <laughs> they can do when they put their mind to it. And so whenever they're going to try to like be like, well, you know, it's just these things take time. I'll be like, yeah, bro, I just watched you completely rework affixes in like. I mean, I think they basically month. admitted that they basically admitted that they, they because they literally said in a thing last week, especially if you're coming from a high key perspective, they're like, we think that these changes are not a one size fits all solution. And we've never actually thought about designing the game for what goes beyond our reward path, which is basically in parentheses, high mythic plus. They literally said that a week ago, right? And this is the first time they've ever come up with any kind of key development. Like it also includes Kiss Curse affixes and a more streamlined affix experience for people who are just going up to the portals or just a little beyond that. But it also is the first time they've done that. And they mentioned that literally last week. And also, remember we talked about those alpha interviews? We were like, can we expect any more changes to affixes? And they're like, and this was right after they announced the season four stuff. And it was like, nah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And it was like, no. And like, not even being like coy about it. Yeah. Just like, they, no. They weren't even like, you know, no wink, wink. It was just like, no, not really. Like, we, you know, we're yeah, it was no. Basically happy with what we have. It was no. They heard the response from that, which was negative. So they're like, okay, well, maybe we do need to do something with affixes. And then they did that first thing, and then they got response from that, and then they did the Wowhead interview, and then people were like, oh, okay, gave a lot of good response to that. And then this post today was probably like thought about in meetings last week after the response to that interview, I think. That, that seems to all line up in my head, which means, yeah, you're right. Blizzard basically was like, you know what? Let, let us actually do design Mythic Plus and... I mean, this is clearly a response to the community. This is this is basically just a greatest hits album of what people have been asking for in the community of Mythic Plus in a long time. They asked for no push weeks. They've asked for kiss curse affixes. They've asked for a consistent high key experience. All of those things are addressed at one time. I, I think it's more of like if they had a meeting that started and they were like, what does the community want? And they're like, okay, well, here's this and this and this. Okay, let's do all of that and see how they like it. I mean, because I, I, we started this by asking like how you feel about the the new ones they're trying, which we're going to try on beta today. Um, but like, these aren't even exactly, these are like a, I'm assuming there's going to be more bargains than just these two. And I think these aren't even, maybe even bargains they're going to use. They're just like, they're, they just want to see what passive versus active ones feel like. So they just kind of cooked up two of these real quick. So I think we're going to even get a lot more iteration on this, but also the expansion comes out in less than two months. Yeah. Right? I'm, I'm like, it's the most unexpected, um, like, fucking patch note hotfix whatever the hell on beta in in maybe mythic plus history i can't believe we're seeing this level of change with so little precursor to it so close to launch um and especially the only given thing, the only thing that had to be sacrificed was all shaman class development right that's yes. it that's and, all we had to give frankly, up good trade <laughs> i think i think everybody is okay with that Yep. Um, even shamans, yeah, they love it. Even shamans are like, it's fine. We weren't gonna do Mythic Plus anyway, so like, it's everyone else can have fun. And uh, and yeah, I, I you know I I think that that trade works out ten out of ten times. Um, but it is, uh, and I and I want to go back to you know speaking about the alpha um, interviews. Yeah, there was a point that got made by 
the devs at one point where they said uh, something like, "This is our this is our intended th you know way to go about it," um, unless we hear something from the community. Like unless and I and I remembered this point because I think I actually tweeted out something um, at following the dev interview where I used the like quote from the dev as saying like, "Unless the community," I think it was like the I think the phrase was like, "Unless the community feels strongly about the alternative." And so I think I made a tweet that was something like, hey, guys, do we feel strongly about this alternative? Um, and I didn't expect that to actually result in anything. But maybe yeah. that is truthfully a thing that they are starting to do, which is we have a, a plan to go about doing it one way unless we see a strong reaction from the community that says we don't want that. And in this case, the community has reacted strongly and said, we really don't want that. And Blizzard has gone, OK, you know what? Fuck it. If you guys feel that strongly about it, then we'll do it. Which would be, I think, fantastic. I add the big caveat that I've also seen the community ask for really dumb shit before. Yep. Um, so I, you know, I am aware that it is very easy for us to to go down a slippery slope of Blizzard just doing everything that they see requested, and we could end up in an entirely different hell because of that. Um, what's an example of that? What's one thing the community is asking for that's dog shit? Uh, let's see. What would be something the community wants? Um, I'm trying to think. Well, I, I think, I don't know that there's something that would be like universally dog shit, but it would be something where the, the community may be split right down the middle and there might be a vocal sort of, or like somewhere there's like a vocal minority of maybe like 30% of the players who would be like, we really want this thing. And mm -hmm. most people just don't feel strongly enough to speak up about it but if they made that change suddenly everybody else would be like whoa this oh, sucks i mean like yeah kind of like removing depletion or or having something like that right where i think that at least mythic keeping it mythic plus related i think that's something people have asked for where i think that could just go really bad or really good depending where you just have you ever thought about that well i would love to see depletion removed um, yeah i know you're like that because and i've heard and your yeah. take before you're like oh well then like people's thing will be oh well then just every key is going to be a pull as big as you can reset it if you don't do the pull and it's going to feel like mdi practice simulator but then you're like that's awesome i love i love yeah, that too i love mdi <laughs> I, I i had some of the most fun ever doing those kind of practices but like also i can absolutely see the majority of mythic plus players being like i actually missed when we used to just run a full key and like play the game you know well, I think uh, maybe an example of, of something where the community was maybe asking for a thing and didn't appreciate the the other side of it would be potentially like um, the new gearing system they have with the ability to level stuff up with aspect crests. Um, and I think at first blush, if Blizzard had suggested that system, I think a lot of people would have been like, that sounds sick. Like I can just get gear and then choose which pieces I want to level up. And I have the sort of uh, linear progression through my gear and I'm, I'm not going to get super fucked by RNG. And at a high level, I think a lot of people would have said, that sounds really good. I like that. And then after a couple seasons of that, I think you had people who started to go, mm, you know what? I like the idea of it, but seeing the reality of it, I feel like I finished my gearing too fast. It left me feeling like I was raiding for no reason. I've already got all the eye level I need before we've killed the last boss and it has fucked up the gearing progression in this game. And it sounded nice, but I realized that there were sort of hidden consequences from it that have made other things feel worse um, yeah. as a result. And that's the kind of thing where it's not necessarily that the idea was dumb or the community was being dumb, but you may have pushed for a thing without thinking it fully through, um, or you just, you couldn't have known that there was gonna be that consequence of it. And afterwards it was like, okay, yeah, maybe, Maybe you shouldn't have listened to us. I, I think I think there is potential. It's a very small chance, but I think there is potential with that, with the every week being the same for High Mythic Plusers. I think it's like, again, keep in mind, I don't think this is likely, but just throwing the scenario out there where like the fact that there are push weeks and weeks where you go really hard, sometimes going really, really hard all the time at something is something that not a ton of people like, actually like like having a break. It's like kind of, it's like a ARPG seasons, right? Even in the best ARPGs, you may not want to play them for three straight months or something, but like maybe you're down for a week, two, three weeks every three months or something. You go hard at something. And in a way, push weeks have kind of broken up the time in which you really, really spam uh, like Mythic Plus. So something I could see where is that this sounds good and it is good and all of that. And then I could see people doing the first season of this and then being six weeks into just 
basically being able to play anytime you want and then just ending up stopping playing the season early because you just feel like you've done it all a bunch before maybe like that's yes that's, uh, i think I that's the concern but i i don't think it's likely but i think that could happen the i'll say i i understand the point of like when every when every week looks the same eventually there will be no desire to like go hard every week um i think that's fine I don't think Mythic Plus should be a thing that you're encouraged to go hard on every week. There are teams that will go hard on it every fucking day of the season. Um, and for those people, this will feel great, right? Because yeah. it's like, yeah, you just get to play You can game. just log in. A, a guy like myself, for instance, um, I don't necessarily care about a week being a push week. And that's the thing is, it's not that I especially enjoyed push weeks. It was more about what the other, what the not push weeks were. And I think you would probably have labeled those dead weeks. And the reason they were dead weeks is because the affixes sucked. And it wasn't just a matter of the affixes being slower. It'd be one thing if there were like some affixes that, that lent themselves more towards going quickly and some that didn't. And there was just like, man, we got to have the fast affixes to get our best timer. The problem was the slow affixes just weren't fun. They sucked. Even if you just wanted to do keys for fun, they just sucked. It made keys not fun to do. Things yeah. like bolstering and raging and sanguine you found yourself going to do a pull that you could do with your eyes closed if it was on the easy affixes, and then you go to do it with bolstering or raging, and all of a sudden something one shots you because you can't. Interrupt it's the main it the thing you're is... focused on. The, literally, the main thing you're focusing on has changed. Like the main thing you're focusing on is yep. the pack on the other affixes, and then now your sole focus is on the affix, and the the pack becomes secondary, which leads to a lot more mistakes and feeling frustrating, right? And so it made these keys. Explosive. You know, it wasn't like, remember, well, I remember could... Remember explosive before yeah. they were one-shottable? <laughs> yeah, like, you had to literally sit there and beat on them, and, like, yeah, this is, there's affixes that are... It'd be one thing if it was like, okay, on any week I can time a 20, but on certain affixes we'll go, you know, a minute and a half faster than others. It's like, some weeks you'll be able to do a 20 on a on a with the, with those affixes and then the next week uh you're suddenly stuck doing like an 18 because you just can't do any of the same pulls and everything kills you or it all gets sanguine healed and you're like why the fuck am i even in here like this this feels awful i'm not going to get score i'm not having a good time and you just want to log out and that to me is the problem is not that you weren't going to be able to time the highest keys on that particular week it's that even if all you wanted to do was just goof around in the key it wasn't fun to do it. You didn't want to play alts. Um, you didn't want to have anything to do with Mythic Plus that week. You're like, I'm just going to wait till these shitty affixes go away. And push week wasn't push week because the affixes were insanely fun or good. It was just these are the affixes that are least annoying, least frustrating. And I can focus on actually doing the key. Yeah. And, and so I, I do truly think people will enjoy this more Will, will there be consequences of it that are unforeseen? Probably. But um, I think people will enjoy, uh, if, if, there, if you had some measure of average player satisfaction and keys, I think it would go up in the new system. Yeah. Um, will there be people that stop playing? Well, also, okay, let's season? just, let's just yeah. say, you said the average will go up. I think that's true. I just, and, and also, let's just even say the worst case scenario happens where it's like people stop playing seasons early because it does just feel like it's the same every week, whatever. I think people still want to see that happen instead of not trying it, you know? Like they they want to, yeah. like, like let's see that fail, right? That's that's always yeah, been let's the Yeah, let's at least yeah. try. Yeah, and so I, I have something else I want to ask you actually. So the the Ascendant Zalatas bargain uh, rains down orbs of cosmic energy that attempt to, they're, I'm assuming, let's just see some orbs basically spawn and they're going to be drawn into a pack of enemies. Uh, and every time it touches them, it'll increase their haste and movement speed. And if you soak them, they'll claim it for themselves. If this existed on high keys, which it doesn't here, let's say this exists on high keys, um, you could already see the issue of like, oh, healers shouldn't soak these because they're not gaining damage. And you could see an issue where it's like, oh, well, you only want to bring classes that scale well with haste this week. So certain classes aren't nearly as good or you want to stack it all on this character so you can have their cooldowns come up for every whatever. Right. All that stuff. These don't apply to high keys. Can you see a world where that stuff is annoying and restrictive and selective for those lower levels of keys? Or do you think that because it won't apply to high keys where that would be super metagamed and then people would build their comps around it. Do you think it'll be an issue at that key range? Or do you think that because it doesn't apply to high keys, something like that won't be an issue? I don't think they'll care. There is a mechanic, by the way, that exists like that in keys right now in uh, no good. Um, the, it's not exactly the same, but same idea where the trash around the elemental boss throws out orbs 
and if you if you take the orb you get a damage buff and if you take multiple orbs you get a stacking damage buff and it and it refreshes the duration so the best way to handle those orbs is to designate one person to walk around and take one at a time and keep extending the buff and stacking it um and in low keys nobody gives a shit like you just run around you're like oh cool orbs I'm, I'm this one landed near me i'm gonna take it and nobody's ever gonna argue about that or bicker about it because it's not that big of a deal um it's only on high keys where people are sweaty enough to yeah to, to work around that um yeah, no i don't because like in high keys the... i could see a world for sure where like your comp is made because of this yeah. affix and like what would happen is, and apparently people say this is true, is like, you know, at lower keys, people would just start looking for that exact comp because of the way the group finder system works and you can just always invite that comp. There will be enough people to always, you don't have to do anything else, right? But like, because there won't be that level of influence, people at that level won't care about that and they'll just always kind of invite whoever. I mean, they'll probably invite maybe who people see in like the top groups, even though that affix doesn't exist, but at least it won't be the affix dictating the the group swap I, also, I mean maybe we maybe we get to a world where they have a shitload of affixes like that and it's just like randomized from key to key so you don't even know what you're building your comp for um and uh, like I've, and this is where we're gonna go into like cooks that are unreasonable but um in my sort of dream world uh i wouldn't have minded seeing a mythic plus system that married um torgast and you had essentially a roguelike experience in Mythic Plus where once the key started, everyone got randomized anima powers and they, they were different from, from dungeon to dungeon. You didn't know what they were going to be. And like maybe after each boss you kill, you get another anima power selection. And so you don't know how to like but before the key starts, you don't know what you're going to get that you have to um you have to figure it out on the fly and there would be enough anima powers that there wouldn't just become a stale meta of like you always take this this and this like they would fit together in different ways that was one of the interesting things about torgast was they had some pretty weird anima powers that made spells do completely different things to their normal use case like I, the one that i remember was like uh the paladin one where forbearance gives you like a damage buff so now you're like lay on handsing somebody that doesn't need it at all just to put forbearance on them just so they can do more damage um things like that where it would be completely unpredictable what configuration okay. of animal powers you'd get and and, and just and to be, clear, be different every time just to be clear this would this is for low level affixes this this would not apply I mean, in high keys. i wouldn't even mind it for high keys well, I think that would go. I think well, that would go directly against like what they're trying to. It stop would have to be right? a a like a post Mythic Plus score world where you were not running keys for score because it would clearly make run to run variants insane. Dude, you are so, fucking cooking right now. You are yes, you are it, cooking it would, insane. You would no longer have like a ladder or any of this. Would be purely for like I just want to do dungeons for fun kind of thing. Like we're we're gonna have um a, a different queue for. Four gas mythic plus where you and five buddies or you and Dude, four did buddies you just, can did you just whip this up on the spot is this like some gourmet shit well i've been thinking about something like ever since doing tour gas which i found to be more interesting than i expected in a group like there there was some point in tour gas where you were encouraged to run with a group i think like they they increased the rewards for that or something so where i'd previously been doing tour gas by myself I, I suddenly started queuing up for it and i found that the combining of tour gas powers like the the realizing that several Torghast powers could like buff your party or have some effect on your party members. I was like, this is actually really cool. Like, yeah. I feel like this is a completely I mean, underutilized yeah. part of Torghast. These anima powers that buff your teammates. Oh, Torghast this would was be really definitely fun. Torghast was definitely underutilized. Like, the, honestly, Torghast is one of like the biggest fails I think they've ever done. Like the fact that Torghast. I mean, Torghast was literally better in beta. <laughs> like, so like the the fact that Torghast wasn't awesome where it so easily could have been uh is insane i actually think there's something like you said it would exist to high keys i think high keys before they do anything like that and you said it's a different mode but like uh like they would need to see how this plays out first but like i think this as some kind of a solution for like just imagine like all the way up to a 20 sometimes you get like those random anima powers and it would make your dungeon different every time and you would change the way you play but it wouldn't determine whether you're timing that key or not it's a low key right that's not how that works so i could kind of see that actually being an interesting thing to try uh for this kind of stuff yo you went into like a whole different fucking cook i don't know if i want to like go in that direction because i have a I yeah i wouldn't touch that for right now 
um but just to give an example of like uh the ways that i think they could have buffs in dungeons um i think they could lean really hard into that and um and as, as another thing that just to like briefly touch on but not delve into i i would like to see them come out with more sort of flavors of mythic plus yeah for sure modes of dungeons where there doesn't have to be like this is mythic plus this one way we do it is mythic plus but rather have the way that pvp exists where you have twos and threes and rbgs and uh solo shuffle um that there's no, yeah, yeah. a whole bunch of different modes i wouldn't mind seeing mythic plus get similar treatment where it's like okay five man doesn't have to be a rigid thing you could have a bunch of different expressions of five man content yeah. that each has their own spin. Yeah, I mean, I feel like if anyone is a fan of dungeon content, you would only be for this, right? Because it's it's just giving you more. You, you use flavors. Yeah. That's a good way to do it. Like more it, options. It's giving you more ways to play with your four friends that would have different ways of challenging you in a dungeon environment, potentially. I mean, I, I mean pretty much anyone would be for that with infinite dev time, right? I, I do have something I want to ask you specifically about High Mythic Plus, even though we're in the middle of a fucking gigantic different kind of cook, which is just a different game, but also would be sick. So not only do you lose the powers when you get to a 12, the the, the affixes that rotate or whatever, the seasonal ones uh, or expansional ones, something else that's interesting, there's an extra scaling modifier that's happening now than there ever was before. And I think that this could actually be a bad thing. So when you have Frenzied and Ascendant go away, let's just say those are the two that they end up releasing. When they go away, it's also going to just baseline buff the health and damage of all enemies by 20% in the dungeon. So whenever mm -hmm. keys level up, naturally they scale in general, but on top of that, it's going to be 20% more than before, which let's just say after a 12, right now, I was just looking at your Raider IO earlier. Let's say you've timed a bunch of 20s and a, and a 21, okay? Uh, let's say keys actually only go up to 17s now because how exponential scaling works and there being a bigger baseline modifier there's less levels in the game right if you're beating a game that has seven that has 10 levels now the game has seven levels is that potentially something that's a negative like okay so i add that you know i am going to go the complete other direction on this, from i think the direction you're going and okay. say i think this is actually really good um or th mm -hmm. th that thing you're worried about would actually be really good which is i i wouldn't mind a world where the difference between each level of a key was enormous. Way bigger. Okay, yeah, wow. And I'll okay. tell you what. When you have such a small difference between each key level, it goes up in like increments of like five or eight or whatever percent. I feel like the distinction between um, survivability on different specs uh, comes into uh, a much, it gets much more magnified. And there might be one spec that could live a 20, but not a 21. That might be the break point. But yeah. another spec could live a 22. And when the differences between each key level are really small, you will start to suss out the differences between those specs very quickly. Um, mm. You'll start to realize this one caps at 21, this one can go to 22, this one can go to 23. If the difference between each key level, for the sake of illustration, was, to, was like 50%, then no spec is making the jump from one key level to another. You're all stuck at the same level. And it stops being, you stop distinguishing between like the survivability of the specs because it's it's like meaningless like you you all die to the same stuff you all live the same stuff and y most specs are going to cap out at the same level of key and it stops being about who can time the but highest that, key. that's no no this is not right maybe, but instead about who does them the fastest at that level yeah maybe okay yeah that's if there is but then at that point you would just create a final level that it scales to and you can create that on purpose what i think would happen is let's say the key level is even bigger i don't think it would actually be impossible to do the next thing i think it would be only possible with like a very small amount of amount of classes like if, if it's that big of a jump right where it feels that way there would also be i mean you are right in part of it at least i agree is that like okay let's say after you get your portals there's 10 levels right now to progress but there's only seven but those seven are more meaningful right you only go to a 17 now but like each step is like you accomplish something where right now it's like going from a a 16 to a 17 is like, I don't know. I just feel like I just did the same dungeon and we did it, you know? But like, 
if you went from a 16 to a 17 in that thing, you'd be like, holy fuck, I killed this boss. Like, like it would be like killing Mythic Tendril, you know? It'd be like, I fucking did this at all, regardless of, like, how early in the season I did it. And that achievement would feel bigger. There would probably be more of a stopping point of, like, what's possible, and there would also be more of a progression. I would also think this is weird with depleting, right? Because, like, as long as depletion exists, like, the ability to actually even... Because, like, if depleting didn't exist, it would be more interesting because that next theoretical key level you're talking about is so fucking hard that you would actually need to basically progress it like a raid boss or, like, a MDI dungeon where you just try these crazy pulls and you need a million attempts at it. But with keys depleting, you get that one attempt. So it's, like, that's all you... It'll never get timed kind of thing. Uh, I don't know. It's definitely interesting uh to think about but uh, I, I was thinking even going in the opposite direction where it's like people get i could see people being, being bored with that right okay yeah sure every single class can time a 17 and then no one can time an 18 no matter what let's just say it's fucking impossible and it becomes about time i still feel like feel like people would just be like all right well mythic plus is just done then you know it's like okay we've reached the cap this scaling is so insane that like Maybe in a, two months with enough gear, we can try this. But until then, it's but like, I mean, this is good. You hit that already. Like, that exists in the in the current seasons. Um, it's just it takes you a couple push weeks to usually get to that point. Yeah. Uh, and usually it doesn't happen until after Great Push, because then that's when everybody sat down and, and actually min-max the fuck out of a dungeon. And then once you get these, like, hyper-maximized routes, then everyone does tend to hit the same level of a key. By the end of the season, it's like, yeah, this is as high as the key goes. You can't live beyond that, and there's no point in even trying. They'll just get one shot. So this is as high as it goes. Now it's about who can do that key the fastest. And it just takes longer to get there. Well, with... my, my only thing, I think they would have to intentionally stop the scaling, though, because eventually someone would find a way to time that next thing, and then it would remove all of the effort you spent on speed in that previous level. So I think what you would do is in this cook, you would. we've been using the number seven, right? Let's just say... At 17s, there is no 18. It's literally just like you progress to 17s, but you'd have to make that to where getting a 17 itself is really fucking hard. But then it is truly a speed thing, and you are progressing speed. But then again, depletes can't exist in that scenario, right? It would have to be once you get to a 17, you now have unlocked the ability to speed run that dungeon. It would be like a mixture of a couple cooks you've had before. I actually wouldn't mind them capping keys. Um, yeah. Picking some finite number. I think it would lead to much better balance in keys. I mean, it has to lead to better balance in keys. The infinitely scaling shit can't be balanced. Um, it also removes the just try to live the dungeon thing because like, yeah. you, you basically just forego class's defensive ability in a lot of ways and it becomes purely about damage, which again is restrictive, but it's not nearly as restrictive as it is now where it's like the combination of the stops and defensives and damage. It's like this perfect storm, which actually applies to significantly less classes than just who can do the most damage in this key. I actually think the best system they ever had for five main dungeons was challenge modes with normalized item level. Um, and then there is no scaling because your eye level never goes up. Um, and it's just about figuring out how to do the dungeon yep. the fastest. But just like you said earlier, it could, that could be a flavor. Yeah. That, and then that that's doesn't it, that's have to is, be, that doesn't have to be what everyone is doing. Yeah. You can have high keys and you can have the flavor of dungeons. That's challenge mode. Yeah, I would love to see them bring back challenge modes in addition to the infinitely scaling stuff. And I think there would be a decent number of people that would, that would fuck with doing challenge modes. Can I ask you a weird question? No. All right, fuck it. On to the next thing then. Do you have anything else you want to talk about? Uh, let's see. Was there anything about the announcement today that we haven't talked about? Um, I don't think so. Uh, oh, I mean, we kind of talked about the two rotating affixes. One of them sounds... So I could see Ascendant being annoying just because it's like you feel like you constantly have to just like run around and do stuff. Uh, but this one sounds interesting. So the mobs increasing their damage taken under 30 percent health a lot of the times you're not a lot of classes aren't blasting at the end of a pack so that's like kind of like a feels whatever kind of thing it's not like doesn't feel great um and mobs haste getting increased by 40 is a big big fucking number like and, and i know it's not applied to high keys but like think about before with raging right like raging was a problem in high keys but in lower keys i don't know like people doing like fives and sixes like there's a good chance they weren't kicking a lot of shit anyway. So when you couldn't <laughs> CC them like under 30, not only were you not kicking them anyway, but also those things don't kill you at that key level. So it's like, it didn't matter as much, even though it like was still, it's better that it's gone. Now it's like tanks at a lower key level are going to start taking 40% increased damage. And again, tanks at that key level aren't as good. So you might find 
tanks kiting at a low HP again, which was really shitty. Like, OG Raging kind of made you do that. Necrotic made you do that. Uh, and then also, those casts that you already weren't interrupting and are maybe killing you are now happening 40% faster, becoming harder to kick and going off at higher frequency. Also, in a lot of cases, killing your tank. Did you have any thoughts about that, just for, like, lower key level? Um... I mean, I almost don't even like giving my opinion about low-key shit because I do so few of them that it's like, you know, asking me about, like, living conditions in fucking some other country. You know, it's like, if you know, if you live there, how would you feel about that? And it's like, well, I don't fucking live there. And so I have no idea. Um, and I, I very often see people give feedback, you know, when... when uh, a content creator like myself gives an opinion about some sh some fucking content he doesn't participate in in any way, shape, or form, and then just starts randomly speculating about shit. And they're like, cool, well, this guy doesn't do it, and he doesn't understand any of it, so I don't give a shit what he has to say. And yeah. truthfully, I wouldn't give a shit what I had to say about it either. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's fun. Maybe it's not. Um, it's pro it's not for me. Yep. Um, We're going to find like, out today. Uh, we can, yeah, we can I, I hope it's I hope it's cool. I hope it's fun. I hope people enjoy it. Uh, and if not, at least what I feel like this. I like this I, li I like your weeks. perspective, by the way, like Dratnos and Growl are out here trying to be a man of the people. And you're just like, that isn't me. I'm a man of me. And I don't give a fuck about all these other people. Yeah, like it. it's a, like that's not why you you don't listen to my opinions about level eight keys. Yep. That's not what yep. I'm facts. You know, if you ask me about arenas, I would give a similarly ignorant answer. Um, I don't know. I don't do that shit. That is, Ask dude, people get so mad at shit. me. People get so mad at me about that. I like, I, cause I don't give a fuck about PvP either, but like, pe like PvP sections will come up on my stream and I'm just like, yep, I don't really care about PvP, so I'm not going to talk about it. And then people get mad. They're like, I don't get it. Like, I don't get why you disrespect PvP. I'm like, dude, what would be disrespectful is me giving you my opinion on PvP at all. Cause I would just be fucking making it up. Like yeah. I've never cared or done it. So the, yeah, I, I see that. Um, dude, I really want to ask you this question. Can I ask you it? Please. Is this the weird one? Yeah. Yeah. All right. What color is your favorite flavor? Let's see. Uh, Do you know what I mean by that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, if I saw a food and the only thing I knew about it was what color it was, which would I be most likely to choose? Yeah, I mean, like, kind of like, okay, so, like, you guys know how you can purple. go into a gas station sometimes and it has, like... You don't have to explain anything else. It's purple. Okay, it's purple? All right, fuck it. The way, yeah. Maybe yellow, maybe yellow. I think, Maybe, because uh, purple could be eggplants and I don't really... I think well, I mine's blue. Mine's blue by a mile. No even though, way. even though... No, because even though like blueberries are like, and this isn't exactly the question, but like blueberries are like a f like the most overrated fruit of all time. But like, like if I were to go into a gas station and it was a and, and they they didn't have Gatorade there, but they had knockoff gas station Gatorade, where basically the the flavor is just red or blue. The blue one would just taste better than the other ones. And also, I think about blue raspberry ices, which like go hard as fuck. Uh, so that's, that's mine. I just, I just immediately think blue. If something's blue, I think that shit tastes insanely good. Blue power rage. Raspberries yep. aren't even blue. Yeah, I know. It's uh, like blue. I don't even know how blue raspberries a flavor got started. It's like totally made up, but it goes hard as fuck. That part is true. It was probably the last, like, or, uh, it was probably lobbyists for raspberry that were like, we understand that our fruit is one of several hundred red fruits. It's really hairy. Raspberries about. are hairy. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? They need, I they needed a, they need a rebranding. They are. One second. Raspberries are a very mid fruit. Anybody that raspberry says they like hair. raspberries is instantly suspicious to me. Okay, I can so many better fruits than raspberry. Okay, they're showing me a bunch of pictures with hair, but like, you know what I mean? Don't, don't. Okay, I'm not. Do not gaslight me. Fucking raspberries have like a little hair on them. They got little. If you guys are in, this is this is some fucking big big fruit propaganda. If you're saying they don't have them little hairs on them. Yeah, like kiwis are hairy, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, some fruit just, I mean, it's not bad, really, it's just, I'm just saying it's there, that's it. All right, fuck it. I, yeah, I think, I think we talked about everything. I think we have all the, uh, all the stuff. In, in general, this is a W day for Mythic Plus, though. If not, this is just one of the few days you wake up as a WoW creator or a WoW enthusiast, and it is obvious that either recently or over a long period of time, they have listened and they are, they are making changes to go towards what the community has said they wanted to try, right? I mean, that's just true. Yep. That is, it is a good day, and later today we'll be able to uh, to test those things out. Are you are you gonna stay yeah, I, stay on to test beta stuff? No, no, no. We're I've just been doing keys for like fucking ten hours in a row. My brain is fried. That's like perfect for beta. Fried, yeah, fried maybe, brain. maybe. So, but so. we'll. I actually have a uh, next week starts another push week, uh, fortified, 
and then I go to uh, the Dominican Republic. Ooh. This is actually a, a very good example of why I am happy about the changes to Push Weeks is because um, originally Shauna was supposed to go to TwitchCon EU for her work. And she was like, do you want to come? And I was like, yeah, all right, fuck it. We haven't been on a trip, like just the two of us without the kids in a while. Yeah, Sure, I could, I could probably set aside some time for that. Then that ended up like her plans changed for that, but she's like, "Well, you know, our, you know, we've already got the time, and you already said yes. Let's go somewhere else." And I was like, mm, "Okay, fine, whatever." And so she's like, "We're going to go to Dominican Republic," and I was like, "Okay, cool. Let me look at the Mythic Plus calendar <laughs> for that week." <laughs> and so I looked, and oh, I was like, man. "Ooh, babe, I don't know. It's actually oh my God. it's a push week, and it's the Tranical Week right before to that." And I was like, is, you know, is, uh, is there any chance we could move no it? She was like, no. Way. And I was like, why? And she she just like looked at me. Yeah. And she was like, grow up. And I was like, <laughs> I, look, I get it. But like, <laughs> it's a real thing, man. Like you have teams of oh people you play God. with. Oh my God. Bro, and I get it. It's, a, it's ridiculous, up. but it's a, but it's a thing. It's a real thing. Oh you got, my you got God. four other people that play with you and like they care and... Dude, and yeah, like, it was the well, same thing for here. me. It's like, it's like, so, Max, you want to go on a vacation? Uh, I, I'm sorry, I can't. The race to world first is that week, and then they look me dead in the eye and go, "Grow up." I'd be like, "What the fuck? Like, this is yeah. my job." <laughs> like, I can't. No, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Like, you, you can have all the reasons you want, but at the end of the day, it's a video game, and and you're just gonna, you're gonna get disrespected for that. And so, the change to the push weeks is good for me because now it means that if there's any week I can't be there, it's fine because next week is the same week and the week after that is the same week and so on and so forth. And as long as I can put together one or two weeks in the season of being able to go hard, then I'll be able to achieve, you know, the the goal of the season yeah. to get high score. There might not and ever no be a push week to... like that before or, yeah. or that all your guys around were. And also, so now, people are saying race world first is quite different. It isn't, right? Because this is your race world first week. Like, like, the race world first is a time where you compete in raids and dungeons. It just exists on push weeks near the end of the season, and that's what this. Yeah, race world is. first is, is is like worse because you're locked in. It's the same with WoW esports. Oh, I'm you're fucking locked not, in. Like you're locked in for fucking like months of any any given week in that stretch, um, even a few days in that stretch. Somebody's like, "Yo, can you go? Can we go on a vacation for three or four days?" And it's like, "Well, yeah, we could, but here's the thing: is." A lot of people are going to be mad at me for it. And wait, I'm so gonna... I thought so you are going on vacation during push week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, the grow up hit you hard. That's crazy. Well, it was, dude. This is the thing. Like, you get married and you got to make compromises. Yeah, yeah. And and like it is, you know, it sucks to leave on push week, but also, um, it sucks for your wife to be mad at you about push week. Like, that's also a really shitty reason to get into a fight. Oh yeah. Like, I'm not dying on that hill, you know? Yeah. No, I'm sorry. Sorry, guys. My, <laughs> you probably you made the right choice. Score. Like you made the right choice for sure. It's just it's it's an unfortunate. Wait, where are you going in the Dominican Republic? Punta Cana. Oh God! Someone in my chat earlier said, "Ask him where he's going." The Dominican Republic. If he says Punta Cana, Punta Cana. Yeah, yeah. He no, said no, no, he no. said you're super basic. By the way, I just want to throw no, that out there. No, we are, we are, we are. But I will say, um, we we are planning day trips to Santo Domingo, and so we're we're intending to get out. Is that, a cultured, is that a cultured uh, selection, Dominican Republic enjoyers? I don't know if there's that many places you can go in the Dominican Republic. That... If I asked you to point out the Dominican Republic on the map right now, could you do it? It's the, uh, I actually asked Shauna because I was like, is it the left or the right side of the island? And I don't remember which side she told me it was. I could get you the landmass, but I couldn't tell you whether it's the left or right side of it. One's Haiti and one's Dominican Republic, and I confuse which side is which. Yeah, I feel that. All right, fuck yeah. Well, good job, uh, good job with your relationship, and thank you for all the, uh, thank you for the, uh, the Mythic Plus takes. I and and what a what a based. Also, I hope she she knows the sacrifice you're making, right? Not only are you making a compromise, you are a Mythic Plusman, and you, and you're not doing the TGP, so you can look forward to a push week, and you're like, you're more important than push week. That ha she knows the weight of that, right? That you, that you you probably scored some points, I think. Uh, it's hard to score points by giving up push week for the same reason that she said grow up. So it's like, <laughs> babe, I want you to know that I sacrificed push week for you. She's probably like, you still need to grow up. <laughs> uh, it goes hard. Fuck yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I miss you guys. I haven't seen. When was the last time I I saw both of you guys? It was uh TwitchCon. TwitchCon, and then Blizz. You weren't at. Or it was no. Yeah, it was BlizzCon. It, it, yeah, was, it was BlizzCon. Was yeah. BlizzCon. Well, yeah, well, TwitchCon. Was... I spent more time with you because we were yep. we were at that party. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, we'll tell her. Uh, 
tell her I hope she's doing well and uh, enjoy your vacation and uh, try not to miss push week so much. Thanks for the talk today. Yep. All right, see you, man. All right, we like JB. That was good. Big, big, uh, big J.W in chat. Let's fucking go. Remember to grow up, chat. Stay grown.